sometimes we have our children come to church and they spend most of the time outside the church and that bothers me amen <clears throat> because the spirit of the lord is in here not out there amen there is a burden in the heart of the lord this morning and the burden in the heart of the lord is to stand in the gap for kisumu amen stuff is happening and has happened and uh, i started asking the lord would you open the gates of kisumu so that life may begin to get into that city amen sheila ably testified about what god has done in mombasa it is not by chance it was by deliberately standing in the gap and praying and calling upon the name of the lord and crying out to god and doing prayer walks and doing prayer drives and asking the lord for mombasa to be his amen and so it is a miracle but it did not just happen men and women stood in the gap to pray kisumu needs the same and i was asking the lord lord send us to kisumu i am trusting the lord to send us to kisumu just to go and pray and i'm asking the lord give us a point person in that city that we can connect with and have a place where we can go there constantly to pray hallelujah the lord open my eyes to see something and this i say because it's important the lord told moses i have heard the cry of my people and i am raising you as a deliverer over my people and moses was filled with zeal but it was carnal and so he went forward and with with that burden he carried the burden initially in the flesh and so he went forward and um, he killed some people because he knew this is how we do it this is how we deliver our people we need to put some people silent we need to tell them we are present and so he kills some people and then he comes back to his own who he finds fighting and he tries to separate them and he says who and they told him who has made you the mediator or the arbitrator in our midst yet you have killed and for a season moses was in the presence of god until god taught him how to stand in the gap and how to be a deliverer Moses stood in the place of God to bring forth the people of Israel the way God wanted and not the way Moses thought. And right now there is a lot of revengeful spirit in the hearts of very many. And you may not even be in Kisumu right now, but you could be in Mombasa. You could be in Nairobi or any other place, but because of what is going on, there is rage rising from the inside and all that you feel and you want to do is to kill somebody now that has got to die that has got to go under the blood that there is need for deliverance there is need for the light in kisumu but it has to be the god way it ha- god himself has got to send himself a people that will stand in the gap for the city and the county of Kisumu until that county changes and becomes the nation that God wants it to be. 
Hallelujah. Kisumu is in Kenya, isn't it? Hallelujah. It is part of us. Praise be to Jesus. And because it is part of our nation, we cannot pretend that what is going on there isn't going on. It is going on. And there is no just way of explaining right or wrong in this matter. Death is not something that God is happy with. And we cannot stand and say, Here is easy. No way. We have got to stand in the gap. I shared some time ago. Keep standing. We are praying as we stand. I shared some time ago that you remember when HIV was a mystery and people thought that HIV could be transmitted by coughing and by all these things. During that time, it was very easy to feel like HIV ni wow. Praise be to Jesus. And so we didn't pray, we didn't bother, you know us, we are fine and all that. Until HIV started hitting our homes. And I can tell that there is none of us in this room, I believe, who has no relative close to you who has, who has HIV or has died of HIV. When it started getting home, then we realized, my goodness, this thing is close. Then we started finding out ways on which we can be able to, 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 to love and not stigmatize those people that have HIV. So we started getting some bit of education so that when it happens close home, we will not find ourselves in a place where we are saying, where we are caught by surprise. The spirit that has dominated the city of Kisumu is pride. But I can tell you right now that pride in Kisumu is almost at the bare minimum. But it is rising in other places in the nation. The spirit of pride is rising in other places in the nation. And we are at a risk. If we will pray for Kisumu, God will break the pride in our hearts and he will spare other regions of our nation. Pride is rising in other parts of our nation in very escalating levels. And I'm not saying because I read it in the news, I'm just speaking by the Spirit of God. As we stand in the gap to cry out to God for salvation and for healing and for change, God will begin to do the same in our hearts. And we will be agents of sending God's love, God's peace, God's humility everywhere that we go. It is time that the nation is one, but it can only be one under God. Amen. So I want us to pray for the county of Kisumu. There are other places all over the country where there are Kisumu Dogos, but that's not the main. I want us to go to the core of where things are hurting and begin to ask the Lord <coughs> to have his way right at the very base of Kisumu. Amen and begin to lift up every idol and every force of darkness and everything that has held up that city so that it remains a closed city. Praise be to Jesus. Praise be to Jesus. And begin to set that place apart for himself. Let us begin to ask God to enter in and to bring in the spirit of life, revival. Begin to change that county for his glory. Let us begin to ask the Lord to release healing over its land. And that the land will no longer vomit its own people. But that the land will begin to accept its own people. Hallelujah. Open your heart right now and begin to pray for the city of Kisumu and the county of Kisumu in the name of Jesus. Zuka batanda rekiriba tikiraba santaraba sereberia shantaraba saya rekuta mande rebesiki andaraba sekereberia santaraba bai let healing happen upon the land 
Let healing happen upon the land. We plead the blood of Jesus upon the lake, oh God. Every spirit of the lake, Lord, we silence them by the power in the blood of Jesus. We declare the spirit of pride has no rule over the people. In the name of Jesus, let pride bow. Let pride bow. Let pride bow. In the name of Jesus. the blood we plead the blood of Jesus 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 in the name of Jesus father we visit every other part of the country where there is unrest and we declare peace be still peace be still peace be still peace be still in the name of Jesus Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we pray for our president in the name of Jesus. We pray for our president. Lord, may your spirit rule over his soul. May the spirit of God rule over the heart of President Uhuru in the name of Jesus. May the spirit of the Lord rule over his soul that he will break away from fear. He will walk in boldness. He will take courage. And he will stand for righteousness. He will stand for righteousness. He will stand for truth. He will stand for righteousness. He will stand for truth. He will stand for righteousness. He will stand for truth. In the name of Jesus, let the fear of God come upon President Uhuru. In the name of Jesus. Surround him with your spirit. Protect him from the destruction. In the name of Jesus, keep him safe, O oh God. Keep him healthy, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, and we pray that your spirit will rule over his life. Your spirit will rule over his life. In the name of Jesus. Father, we uphold righteousness and truth in our nation. Let every other foundation that is on, not on righteousness and truth, let it begin to crumble. 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 Every foundation that is not on righteousness and truth, let it begin to crumble in the name of Jesus. Father, we are a nation that shall walk in the path and the ways of the Lord. We give you praise for peace over this nation. We thank you, Lord, for answered prayer. We thank you, Lord, for we have seen the victory of Jesus. Glory be to God. Glory be to Jesus. We have seen the downfall of Satan. We have seen the downfall of Satan. We have seen the victory of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah! 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 Glory be to God. We thank you, Father. To you alone be all the praise and all the glory forever and ever. And everybody said, Amen. Everybody said, Amen. Everybody shout, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Kenya is the Lord's. It is the Lord's. It is a beautiful nation. A nation that belongs to God. He has conquered for our land. Woo, glory. Glory be to Jesus. I encourage each one of us to get the young people to, to love on God. The spirit of division cannot go after us to the generations under. What came from our fathers got us square.
fair and square and we have flowed in the same thing they flowed in it cannot happen in our children it must not happen through the next generation we are the ones to stand and say no i thank god for the intermarriages amen and it 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 doesn't end in that only because even intermarriages we still see a dancing here and there it's the spirit of god that will make the nation one the next generation must be a generation that walks under god that will love without caring for anything else they just want to know are you born again or not if you're born again you're one of us if you're not born again then you can't become one of us we're going to draw you in by the spirit of god and you get born again we must pass this to our children amen they must not see division flowing from us amen so are you going to be an ambassador are you going to be a good steward to ensure God over my life he's not only my savior but he is lord amen i don't lead myself and i strive as much as i can not to lead myself hallelujah so he is my lord and because he has loved me i love you you didn't hear me i said i love you hallelujah hallelujah will you allow me to just disturb you one more time i just like you to arise and spread love around just tell somebody hug them tell them i love you it is important it is hallelujah how many got blessed lifted changed transformed by the series of getting on to the offense you learned something hallelujah we are into a new series and the new series is going to be how to remain true how to remain true amen amen i touched a little bit about it last sunday and maybe we can go there today's today's message on that series of how to be true is the plague in the church of Kenya the plague that is in the church of Kenya we're going to see the plague that is in the church in Kenya revelation chapter 2 verse number 1 the bible says and unto the angel of the church of ephesus write these things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks i know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou can't not bear them which are evil i would like as we read for you to begin to see the trophies in this church of ephesus amen there is not a church out of the seven that are spoken of here that is most celebrated like the church of ephesus amen hallelujah the church of ephesus is the most celebrated so i want you to pay attention to why amen this is the lord speaking and he says i know thy works i know thy labor i know thy patience these are guys who are workers these are guys who labor these are guys who have displayed patience these are guys who cannot bear evil amen 
Thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them to be liars. Ain't that something? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. That a church would come like this one, and a man would come and say, I'm Apostle Jojo Biero, and you tell them, Ain't no apostle there. I'm not chochote to me kuskan. Hakuna kitu. Praise be to Jesus. That was the kind of church. You come there with a big title and you start speaking and they look at you and they say, Sasa uyu, haliji bandikezo jina nini? That was the church. They had the ability to be able to know who was false and not. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? Today we, are, we have churches filled with people that we do not even know the people that speak to us, we don't know whether they carry a right spirit or a wrong spirit. And we're going to look at something. It scared me. Amen. We may start it today and not finish. But we are here by the grace of God. We'll continue. Hallelujah. Look at that church. They knew. They could tell. And I'm going to hmm. I'm not kidding. Verse number three. And has borne and has patience and for my namesake has labored and has not fainted. Hallelujah. These are guys who don't give up. Hallelujah. They are not giving up. They haven't fainted. Many of us, our strength grows small, but these guys were a strong people. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But they still had something. Walikuwa na kasoro. Hallelujah. And the kasoro they had, the word of God says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. One thing only. And that was, Thou has forsaken thy first love. Turn with me to the book of Luke. Chapter number 10. Are you there? You know how it starts, right? Do you know how it starts? See, that those of you who don't carry your Bibles, you're just looking at me. If I deceive you, you, are, you will be deceived. <laughs> Amen. Even if it is in your phone, just open it. It's important. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you know why the church is deceived today? Because we don't know Bible. And when we come to church, we will carry what Pastor George said and say, Pastor said. And so we have a whole folk of people who live, oh, our pastor, oh, our pastor said. You know our pastor said, uh, so what? Do you realize when your pastor now goes in error or not? Hmm? Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. Happened on a pretty shavitu kwa machozen. And then you mnarog wa nyote. The story in Luke 10 is about the 70 being sent out. Amen? Amen? And they are sent out in the name of Jesus. And they go out and they do mighty exploits. Hallelujah. And verse 17 is of interest to me at this point. And the 70 returned again with sadness saying. Amen. Somebody is reading Bible. Lord even the devils are subject to us through thy name. My goodness. Listen to these guys. They have gone out and they are doing great and mighty exploits. And they come back and the devils have bowed. People that were demon possessed are being set free. People that were sick are being healed. People that were in despair have been encouraged. This is the first time these guys are experiencing that kind of thing. That's the first time they were being sent. 
And then they are being sent. And the very things they see Jesus doing, they are also doing. They come back with joy. Then tell Jesus, Jesus, can you imagine? Even me. Them devils were bowing. Oh my goodness. Ma, 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 ma. I told the devil, devil, come out. And the devil came out. I said, shut up. And the devil shut up. I said, come out. You know, and they, my, my, you know, I can imagine how they are feeling. You know, Lynette now walking. Hallelujah. You know, <laughs> and, and, and rejoicing. Why? Because the very things we see our master doing, we have done. That becomes the place of greatest danger. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding or nevertheless, in this rejoice not. Praise be to Jesus. I have given you power. I have given you dominion. Even if they try and poison you, you won't die. Whatsoever evil is coming at you, it will not take the hold of you. This is what I have given you, Jesus says. I have given it to you. Nothing can touch you. Nothing can harm you. I have given these things to you. Ain't that something? Praise be to Jesus. Anybody here who has ever been given an inheritance by your father or mother, anyone, lift your hand. How did you feel? You feel awesome. You know you didn't work for it. My goodness. Just like that. Just because I have a relationship with you, now you're giving me like that. Praise be to Jesus. Hallelujah. The inheritance that was being given to the apostles was power, authority, dominion, rule. And he says to them, but rejoice not in this. Rejoice not in this. But rather desire to know that your name is written in the book of life there is no difference from what jesus said to the disciples from what the angel was speaking to the church in ephesus they walked in great signs and wonders they walked in the demonstration of the power of god but if they lacked something they lacked the first love and the first love is the only guarantee that you're destined for heaven. Did you hear what the Bible says in Revelation where we just read? He says that yet, he says that after that, he says that, you know what? I know you hate what the Nicolaitans do. Even me, I hate what they do because they come to deceive. But he says to them that however, whoever shall overcome, I shall allow you to eat of the tree of life. There is a tree of life. There is a tree of life. And you can only access the tree of life if you walk in the first love. Oh, you're not with me yet. You will get on board. Hallelujah. Praise be to Jesus. Praise be to Jesus. I just want us to talk this morning by the Spirit of God about the deception and the core thing that is troubling the church in Kenya. I looked at it yesterday and it was taking me to places, you know, and, and I started looking and the Lord was opening up my heart. And I want us to see where it comes from. Open your Bibles in the book of Col Colossians chapter 3. Hallelujah. By the Spirit of God in this series, we will get to discover deception and truth. My goodness, 
I am giving myself to the Lord because in this season I'm going to speak for truth. Amen. Whether the devil likes it or not. Amen. Whether I will be put in jail or not. Amen. For the sake of the gospel. Yes, Lord. Are you in Colossians? Yes. Chapter 3. Yes. Amen. Let me turn there as well. Blessed be Jesus. I will read from verse 1, but my interest is not there. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek not the things, seek those things which are above, where Christ seated at the right hand of God. Do you hear me? If you be risen with Christ, where is our focus? Where ought to be our focus? Where ought to be our focus? I'm already beginning to preempt where we are heading. Any message and any teaching that focuses on the carnal things and on the things of the earth is a, a recipe to deception. Amen. Watch it. If you be risen with Christ, are you born again? Are you born again? If you are born again, you better get wind out of the spirit of bless me, bless me, bless me. Because all those things are for here. They are not for heaven. That is why the church is being deceived. We have got to win ourselves out of the desire for the carnal and the material and the temporal things. Set your affection, set your eyes on Jesus. Jesus is not on earth. Jesus is not on earth, He's high above. Praise be to Jesus. Seated at the right hand of the Father. We have, got to, we have got to open our spiritual eyes. Did anybody ever read the scripture about Abraham? Who, who set his eyes on a city whose builder and maker is God? That was not a city made with human hands. A man blessed tremendously. A man walking in great wealth. But his desire was not the wealth. His desire was a city. Whose maker and builder is God. Not that which man makes. We have lived in a time and in places where we are so caught up with what man can make. That we are not focused on that which the spirit is doing and making. Set your affection on the things above. And not on the things on the earth. Listen. We are not telling you to now be irrelevant. <laughs> but the Bible is saying. Where your affection. Affection. You understand that word? Your passion. Your desires. Oh God. If I could only see you. Lord I want to see angels. Some of you have never seen angels. And you don't want even to see. You just want a big car, you want a big house, my goodness. And you haven't explored anything in the spirit. Lord, Lord, can your love be seen? Lord, can peace be felt? I want to feel peace. You know, there are things in the spirit that we need to crave for, that we need to set our affections on, and not the things that are carnal. Here we are just, you know, to natafuta tafuta. And you know, even in the midst of struggle, can you say, Lord, show me how to find peace? I know my house is almost being auctioned, but Lord, you said my peace I give to you. Can I experience that peace? Lord, can I experience a peace that even when my things are being taken, I know that my Redeemer lives, that I can still stand and say that Jesus, you are my Lord. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, I love the next line. Who is what? Who is our life? Oh, my goodness. When Christ, my goodness, my goodness. Uh, has anybody ever fallen in love? Do you realize that when you fall in love and when love is in the air, there is no time, there is no boundaries, 
Praise be to Do you know love will get you to spend what you didn't think you're going to spend? If I'm going to find love in Uganda, I will go to Uganda, brother. Because love is, and I will not feel it's expensive. Praise be to Jesus. There is no distance in it. And when we meet, we are not looking at the watch and saying, oh, it's time to go. We will only realize, my goodness, it feels like five minutes after it has been five hours. This is what love does. Praise be to Jesus. You get into another realm that is so out of this world and says, when Christ, who is our life? Who is our life? Do you feel the same for Jesus? Is there a desire to just say, Lord, I just want to be where you are. In your dwelling place forever. I don't want to worship from afar. I just want to be with you. My goodness, you know, and you're just there. I want to be where you are, dwelling in your presence, feasting at your table, surrounded by your glory. Do you realize when you begin to sing like that, you stop thinking about the things of here. You begin to rise. You begin to rise. Think about the songs you sing all day, all night. You know, there are some songs that just lift you up. They take you, they take you, they take you, they take you. Oh. Mm. And you know, you start smelling and then you open your eyes just to make sure. Is somebody, has somebody passed? Has a cologne passed? Is there a flower around me? That must be the breath of the heaven. This is the air I breathe. Mm. This is the air I breathe. Doing what? Ain't that something? Ain't that something? Hallelujah. You begin to get into an environment that is so heavily invested with the very presence of God. God has a smell. You desire, you will smell a smell that you have never smelled before. The Holy Ghost has an embrace. He will cuddle you in and you say, Oh, Father, if I could just be alone with you a little longer. Oh, my Jesus. When Christ, who is my life, shall appear then we shall be we shall also appear in glory with him therefore mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth he's telling you now begin to deal with your members hallelujah fornication uncleanliness inordinate affection evil conspicuous and covetousness and covetousness I want us to deal with the spirit of covetousness that is the plague of our nation and the church in Kenya it may be affecting many other nations but that is the plague and the root of where we are as a church, the spirit of covetousness. The spirit of covetous, covetousness is a desire, a greed for more, for things to yourself, a desire to just have more. It is a spirit that is discontent. It never has enough. Praise be to Jesus. Covetousness. Haina kikomo. Praise be to Jesus. Even when you feel you're very nice, Lucy, everything is looking nice and perfect, then you just cast your eyes beside, mm -mm. God, even that one. Even that one. Even that one. 
Lord, why not me? And the spirit of covetousness has been released to the church by pastors. We have released the spirit to you. Amen. We are the ones that have released the spirit to you. We tell you, you bring, you will be blessed. You will be blessed. So, praise be to Jesus. You can be that kind of Christian that will tell the Lord, Lord, nishinde tu kanini kamoja, kasport pesa kamoja. Yo spirit ime achili wakwako tayari. And there is a desire for you just to win one, one charity sweep stick, just one. Lord, no denizangu zote zishe, just one, just one. And you think it is the spirit of God. God does not work like that. So you are there, Lord, saying, Lord, just this hundred of bob, e hundred bob pekiake, ni wake to now. Pop, if I nick it, and you put your hundred and nothing happens. And say, Lord, you ain't gonna be end of it. Says, What you ain't gonna do, you ain't gonna do, and the mission one never ends. You keep on doing, you keep on doing, and you wonder, Where did this spirit get you? The spirit was released to you from church. Instead of setting our eyes and our affections on the things above, we are setting our eyes and our affections on the material things. And I will tell you, Marianne, come. Come, Marianne. And I will tell you, come. And then I will hold her in front like this and then tell her, go round, go round, go round, go round. By the time she's going back to sit, I have cast a spirit upon men that is just negative. And there is a fake desire in the hearts of people because I want them now to be like Marianne. So, while I'm to one pack, what I'm going to challenge na to do a challenge. Praise be to Jesus. Because the pastor keeps on celebrating such kind of people. So now the rest of you who are not like her begin to feel like you are not anything. And so there is a something that is born within you that makes you strive. And you're striving in an ungodly way. Praise be to Jesus. Simply because a spirit has been cast upon you and the pastor keeps on celebrating. Every time he uses as an example, Anatumia tu lena, 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 Sasa uyu lena. You know? So every time you come to church, the first person you want to look at is Le. Why is Lena being used as an example all the time? Praise be to Jesus. And if it is a brother, it is Mike. So why is Mike all the time? Mama ni mvenye. Si say me kitu. Praise be to Jesus. The spirit is being released upon everybody. A spirit of discontentment. You are not happy with where you are. You cannot walk in contentment. Did you ever read in your Bible? The Bible says in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 6. It says that godliness with contentment is great gain. You will be godly, but without contentment, you're doomed. Now, this is what the scripture says. And the spirit of covetousness, which is, which is, which is, and we stay here, and we count how the children of Israel had idols and idols and idols. Yet we in the church today have more idols than we would care to want to discover. But by the Spirit of God, we will uncover them idols. Amen. Praise be to Jesus. We say we are not worshipping idols, but covetousness has released idol worship. In the Pentecostal church more than any other church. Bonesha si fiwe. Roya ushindani ili toka hapi. Si ya mungu. Si ya mungu. Iyo roni ya shetani. Praise be to Jesus. Sita msikilia mchungaji mungine vizuri. Praise be to Jesus. Hati ya minuna keyboard gani? Hati ya minuna kununa. 
you know ati sound yake you know so you come and you sorora sound una sorora hii sound una sorora hii sound unasema hmm. wacha i'm going to unleash praise be to jesus and so the spirit is in the pastors and the same spirit is being passed to the people so when it is being passed to the people every sunday mlete mtoe 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 hatujafika mtoe 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 you know because we we want to move in there so quick and we wonder what is ruling the church today it ain't the spirit of god it's the devil himself ruling but he's ruling in the hearts of men oh my goodness we will go into false prophecies Amen. you're going to be cleansed of all false prophecies Amen. by the spirit of god ju wengine wenyu mmezuiliwa tu kwa sababu ile unabii litolewa juu ya maisha yako ilikuwa ni nabii ya kiwongo na ukaishikilia na ndio inakuelekeza hivi inakuelekeza hivi just because a man who was covetous released the same spirit upon you and now you're also wondering let me take you to scripture because you think i'm just talking praise be to jesus let's go to the old testament jeremiah the book of jeremiah chapter 6 hallelujah anybody ever read that book Hamam na juanga tu Jeremiah 29:11 Praise be to Jesus Jeremiah 29:11 tu ndo mnajua Jeremiah 29:11 which says I have good plans unaona venye covetousness inafanya tu kazi Praise be to Jesus I have got good plans for you plans for a future to give you a hope and a future and all this hope and future you tell me whether any one of them has been spiritual Hope and future is you gonna get a husband. Amen. You're gonna get a good wife. Whoever finds a wife finds a good thing. So the good things are here. Open your eyes, man, and you see now the spirit is already being cast. Hallelujah. So ana uma anaanza kukodoa macho hivi anatafuta. Mnakuwa maravenger sasa. Just simply because somebody used scripture and twisted it to make it look carnal we i'm telling you that scripture is nothing carnal in it have good plans i'm going to remove you from kisauni i'm going to bring you to nyali hallelujah hallelujah na utapata hiyo church imeja hivyo hata watu wawili tu ndio wanaishi runda wengine wote hawaishi karibu hata huko so una unatafuta una tu hiyo fence nyingine you know in every in every in every leafy suburb there is a slum behind it so now you you uta, utaka kwa slum hivi venye uh, useme tuko nyali east tuko nyali west yeah, you know just 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 so that you feel your nyali raised <laughs> Hmm? Na mimi naishi nyali pia. Haleluya. Unaishi wapi? Nyali. <laughs> Just because the pastor has been talking bad about your estate. <laughs> hmm? So unasema siwezi sema natoka huko. I have to ha- lazima nihame. Covetousness. Ndio hiyo rotu. Praise be to Jesus. Are you in Jeremiah chapter 6? Are you there say amen. Amen. Verse number 13 the Bible says and from for from the least of them even to the greatest of them everyone is given to covetousness and from the prophet even to the priest everyone dealeth falsely. Praise be to Jesus. Covetousness. Let me tell you. Today. Today. If I want a ray of light to grow. I will need to prophesy. Hmm? Every Sunday. I will need to prophesy every Sunday and cast out a few devils. The church will be packed and we will not fill this place so the driver here is i want ray of light to become a mega so because i want ray of light to become a mega church i'm going to prophesy 
Praise be to Jesus. Do you want me to prophesy? Do you want me to, can I prophesy? And then you make a little bit of drama. Of drama. Can I prophesy to you now? And then I tell you, stand up. Stand up. Obviously, none of us here has a good past. The, our past is all horrible. So I will say, I see your past. He looks so bad. You used to cry in your past. Oh, past is true. It's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. It is true for all of us. Stop crying. Stop crying. Our past is all not good. Kisha kwa receive kwa past. Sasa na kutoa kwa past. Ana kuleta kwa future. But now, I see your future is bright. Your future is bright. In fact, I see you moving from where you are. I see you changing houses. I see you changing jobs. And then, and then you tell what people do a keyboard. Akwapi. Tindin, tindin, tindin. Praise be to Jesus. And we dramatize the whole thing. You know, we have to make sure that we confuse the church. We set the church in confusion mode. Now, the words I am speaking to you are not for you. The covetousness in my heart is leading me to prophesy. So that you can be able to move. And the spirit of, of covetousness is also getting into you. So now you also begin to feel anyway. I need to move. I need to move. It's not the will of God. Oh my goodness. You are in a very good job. I need to change jobs. Ah, no wonder we boss wangu atuskizani. In fact, nenda kupatia na barua. Praise be to Jesus. So you resign. Just because somebody told you you need to change jobs. You haven't sought God for anything. You leave a good job. You stay five years later. How on a job? Uliacha job ya ma? Kwa sababu ya nini? Prophecy. And the thing about it is that this pastor is doing that so that his congregation can grow. The thing that is driving him is the covetousness in his soul. So I will deal falsely with all of you. Start giving you false things. Praise be to Jesus. Now I have a word of prophecy. Praise be to Jesus. So I will come and now begin to prophesy you based on Masenge. So I will consolidate Udaku. I can get some prophecy. Praise be to Jesus. And now I can prophesy to you. The thing that is driving me is covetousness. I desire for more. I desire to grow. So the spirit that is now being passed on to the people is the same spirit of discontentment. Hatutuli. Hatutosheki. Angalia kanisa leo. There is no satisfaction in the church of today. We are running helter skelter for material carnal things. Things for this life. Things for this life and not for the other life. And you're coming to pass the pastor. Why is the prophecy not coming to pass? It's a lie. It's a lie. Praise be to Jesus. Did you read it? From the least to the greatest of them. Pastors, prophets, priests, all of them are invaded by the same spirit of covetousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A desire for more. And be deceived and stay in deception. But as for me and my house, as for me and my house, we're going to look for God. We're going to find the true and living God and live to serve Him and Him alone. Praise be to Jesus. Are you in Ezekiel 14? I told you 13. Turn to 14. We'll go to 13 some other time. Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me and sat before me 
And the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols where? Yeah. Where? Yeah. So you thought that the idols ni zile sana moza wa indi unasa hmm. Angalia uju jamana idol wake. Unenge kwa duko unanza kukas you idol. Lakini wewe idol zenye unatembe nayo. Sasa ndo wengi. Praise be to Jesus. You know, my stones, my idols, then you are now. No wonder you're walking like that. You know, because the idols you are carrying are so heavy. You don't even, you, you can't even walk nicely. You can't walk briskly because the idols are so many. Praise be to Jesus. We are busy pointing fingers at those idols. Hangaleo, you are not worshiping ngombe. Hana worship aje ngombe. Lakini wewe. Mbono na wash binadamu. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Haven't we idolized men? My man of God. My man of God. What are you doing at that point? Whatever my man of God says, my prophet says, is true. So sasa katika moyo wako umeoka nini? My man of God. That is the, the idol is in the heart. Oh, whatever he will tell me. I will not even check with God. I know he speaks from God. Lena. Thus says the Lord. Once I release that. Oh, Father. Thank you. Oh, and, and you're all over the place. Praise be to Jesus. Why? The thing is your idol is speaking to you. Why wouldn't you obey and follow your idol? When your idol is speaking to you. Think about it. Some of us, it's our spouses that we have raised. And we have placed them like God. When your spouse hurts you like this, you feel like I am not born again. I am going back to everything I ever used to do. Why? Because you have placed this man or this woman in a place where only God ought to be. We have made idols of our careers. You know, lakini utashtuka hivyo Sunday. Ah, ni Sunday. Praise be to Jesus. Because the idol in your heart is your career. And your career is the one driving you. Listen to me. It's covetous. Now after I've gotten this, I want to get this. Now after I've gotten this, I want to get this. Now after and, and, and you see, your, your pastor will always tell you, don't settle for mediocre. You want to napenda kutumia sana. Don't settle for So now, there is something else we are calling the spirit of excellence. But it is not the spirit of excellence. It is the spirit of covetousness that is now taking us higher, 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 higher. Praise be to Jesus. So because you love fine things, the idol in your heart is an idol called fine things. Hallelujah. So everywhere you turn, hmm, this is fine. It just looks like it's good for me. And I will say, you know what? Okay, Madison, now you're ready. She, eh? Did you say something like Covetousness in a, in a tembe apo. Apo, apo. Praise be to Jesus. Because I love fine things. Oh, where did you get that? Oh, but <laughs> praise be to Jesus. And then you come to Lorraine and Unam Guza Guza and say, hmm, Saluniswaka copy. Praise be to Jesus. And then you find yourself because you love the fine things. The thing that drives you is not God. It's the fine things of life. That is what drives you. That is what drives you. Lord, I don't want a pro box. Lord, I can wait for as long as I can wait. So long as my first car is going to be a Mercedes. Lord, I will wait 20 years. So you find the thing that is driving you is the fine things. Lord, I will never change my sofas. Mm, Lord, until. So you know you don't have the money for what you want. Amen. But because you have, a, you have an idol called the fine things, you, uh, you will just keep on. Hmm. Hmm. 
and you, you, you know un, una tama ile mekushika and you're always going round going round going round unaguzo unasema hmm shatanda rabataka <laughs> but but what you are basically doing is the you, the idol is speaking to you and you're responding because you love the fine things so the idol in your heart look at it let me tell you let me tell you scan I want to finish with this. Every single one of you scan when you come to the house of God and you are saying God speak to me. You always have an in, an inclination in a particular way. What is it that you want God to speak to you? Let me tell you. I can prophesy by divining spirits. Diviners know. They know. Oh, they do know. Praise be to Jesus. And they will be able to pick Sheila what is in your heart. Because Ume Tanga Saifi, Lord, speak to me. So I know that you want another job. I, I can read it. Because it is in the open. Now you who wants that another job, think about it. What is that that is going on? So I will come here and not by the spirit of God, but by this, my own spirit and by a divining spirit, a knowing spirit. I'll come and tell you, you need another job, job, God you spoke. But he will only speak to the degree of the desire in your heart. What is the desire that is dominating our hearts today? God, I expected to get a better word. So now I'm going to repent. I'm going to repent. I'm going to repent. the word of God. Where are you going to say about your idol? You want God to address your idol? Because anything that is going to take you to the path of righteousness, you're saying, you see prophecy. What's in it after the Kanisa? In Guinea, Mali Ambapo has a good word. Ni ambiyo baka jina yangu. But that is what you have in your heart. I want a man that can tell me everything I ever did. So the idol in your heart is not, the, 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 the spirit in your heart is not God. It's the idol. Think. By the way, that is the seller. You spend time this week and begin to ask, Lord, what are the things that drive me? When I come into the house of God, what are the answers I need? And those, that, that will inform you. The idol that is in your heart. Some of us, the idol in our heart is affirmation. So I will do anything for affirmation. I will do anything donyambiwa oh dama. Well done. Service kisha ni spambiwa ivo. Ay. Kwani ni lefanya viba leo. Ni mongeza service viba. Ha. Hata pasta kusema kitu. The thing that is ruling at that point is you just want affirmation. So it is the idol in your heart. And if it is the idol in your heart, and the pastor is also here, he will also release another spirit into you. And he will tell you, you know what? You need to move churches. Uko aku recognize anointing yako. Iko above pastor. Anointing yako, iko above pastor. So you need to move and start your own church. So here you are. And let me tell you the same word. Because the church today is filled with covetousness, you will get a confirmation in another place. Not because they have had God, but because the idol in your heart is open and is speaking. So they pick that spirit and they will speak it back to you and you think it is a confirmation, but it is still the idol in you speak. It's time to tell the church the truth. This is the plague that is hurting the church. If you move it now to the political, which I don't want to touch, you will see it's the same spirit. It's, it's, it's now escalates into the political, but the political is now the climax. You think about it at your church level, you will find the idols in our heart. Oh my Jesus. You've been asking God for a word. Scan through 
en sí. Scan through en sí. I want to pause. I want to give you another scripture before I pause. Leviticus. Tutakuwa Old Testament hii mwezi na mwezi ujao. But there is also a reference in the New Testament. Usiniambie eti nimewarudisha Old. By the other Old ni Bible. Eh. Ata Old ni Bible. Leviticus. It is between Genesis and chapter 26. there The word of God says in verse number 1 that you shall make for yourself idols hmm? Thank you Jesus somebody is reading bible You shall make you no idols nor graven image Shall you, okay let me read from the amplified you shall make for yourself no idols nor shall you erect a graven image pillar obelisk nor shall you place any figured stone in your land in the in your land to which or on which to bow down for i am the lord your god The Lord is saying if we have placed anything before God then it stands in the place of God. And what I'd like us to do this week by the spirit of God is to allow the spirit of God to scan us and see the idols that have been hidden in our heart. It is from the root of covetousness Hallelujah it is from the root of covetousness iro ya kutaka ya kutaka yenye utosheki hiyo ndo roho that is the spirit think about it think about it think about it think about it let's pray about it is there anything that has come before God? anything that has come before God oh the lord opened me up to mine he did i started repenting i started telling god god please remove this idol i don't want anything that was done before you i don't want anything that was done before you and i'm going to tie it up with where we started the church in ephesus moved away from the object of their love and devotion which was Jesus and they began to idolize ministry they began to idolize the gifts Lucy they started saying oh man there is no prophet 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 who is as accurate as this prophet so they began to idolize they are the ones who can scan and tell who are the lying prophets and who are the they started holding that dear He warned the disciples and he told them please though I have given you power rejoice not in this because the minute you begin to get your grip on those things the spirit of covetousness will find root when the spirit of covetousness finds root idolatry will find cause and it will grow anybody remembers somebody that said I will ascend and be like him i will ascend and be above the stars i will do this it was the spirit of covetousness it was the devil lucifer himself though being in a place of great power great honor great status was not content the lord started opening my heart to my own idols and i have been weeping to the lord and say lord remove this remove this remove this remove this 
I don't want to ever stand before your people and begin to prophesy. So help me, Jesus, to stay true to you. Help me, Jesus, that you would be my first love. Help me, Jesus, to destroy every idol in my heart so that you would remain God. Arise on your feet. I was in any personal want for I have learned how to be content satisfied to the point where I am not disturbed or disquieted in whatever state I am this is Paul speaking to the church in the Philippines in 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 Philippi and he was telling them guys I know I lacked but I never begged you guys I never begged you guys out of being given a chance to testify and now the man of God has rubbished everything you achieved and you're like okay God Kwani is the spirit of discontentment that is being cast upon the people it drives its inhabitants to strive and achieve more and more we are trained in discontentment in that something we are actually trained in that something my goodness the devil is a liar he has trained us we are trained in in discontentment so in church you are told the way things ought to be and it is rammed in you every sunday every sunday every sunday every sunday so your body your mind everything is everything is trained in that particular direction it didn't just happen the man who stands here rubs it on you every sunday rubs it on you every sunday and as long as it is being rubbed your mind can no longer receive the truth your mind is now trained and inclined towards a lie and falsehood it didn't just happen we are perpetually assaulted by family peers advertisement media and other avenues that tell us what we lack and to achieve in this world's fulfillment and that's something if yielded to this pressure will produce lofty ambitions and selfish competitive goals true or not true if unchecked we will always be in strife and competition with one another amen you're coming to church instead of being happy for somebody who has testified you're not remember i'm displaying what our heart does not because our heart we are all grown-ups the conversations and the stuff in our heart nobody knows but it is deceitful above all things so i'm not kidding to testify you know you're doing that in your heart it's because there is discontentment it's because the spirit that has been released is a competitive spirit so i will see and i'll be like mm. Kwani. you know and 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 look at the strife and because the bar is set so high hmm, i will come on sunday and tell you where i had lunch and where I met so and so. Now where we mependa ile swahili dishes. He place ingine ita kutoboa mfuko hautaweza kuparent. But because everything that is talked about is in this other place you set for yourself a bar that is too high. Unaambiwa if you want to get yourself a good wife, usimpeleke swahili dishes. Mpeleke mahali atatumia fork na uma, uma na na, na kisu. Praise be to Jesus. So you walk to the venue of Uma and Kisu. And then you pay everything ya Uma na Kisu. And then you tell them I'm fine, I'm waiting for someone and then you walk back home. 
because you had to spend every little time to please this woman that does not even regard you as anything just because you are told the way to win a woman is is in a certain way so we are fashioned in that particular way then we wonder why the rate of divorce is high it was falsehood it was deception sadly too often ministry goals follow this same pattern dreams or callings are perverted to focus on fulfilling self-serving motives though the call may be genuine the motives become adulterated and polluted these ambitions are cleverly disguised with Christian or ministry terminologies that make them very difficult to detect. No matter how disguised, it is still covetousness. It doesn't matter whether you say God will bless you. Oh, this is the blessing of God. Think about it. What we call blessing today. Think about it. Each one of us. What today we call blessing. Or when I say, Mike, you are blessed. That which we say is blessed. See if it be not covetousness. See if it be not carnal. Talk to God right now. In the name of Jesus, the Lord has pointed out areas in our hearts. Think about them and just talk to God right now. In the name of Jesus.